Welcome along to another video presentation from SAT Alliance. My name is Robert Crane. This session we'll look at an overview of installing Small Business Server 2003 R2. Help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation and improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au. The target audience for this presentation is anybody planning to install Microsoft Small Business Server 2003 R2 onto a new machine that currently has no existing software. Our installation is made up of three parts. Initially installing in the blue screen or DOS component, then the graphical user interface under Windows 2003, and then finally installing our applications, which include things like Exchange Server. The initial blue screen component involves us installing disk drivers, creating a C partition, formatting this partition and installing Windows 2003 server files. The blue screen process will typically look something like this and will continue on until the graphical user interface is loaded. For more information about this process see our SBS 2003 installation part 1 video. The next part is installing Windows where we can set the server name an administrator password, we enter our license key, and it will typically look something like this. Once we've finished this process, we return to Windows 2003. We can then add additional drivers for things like network cards, video screens. We partition and format the remaining hard disk space. We select a server and a domain name, and we commence the SBS application installation. We run the process. We'll see that we, the system is checked to make sure it meets the minimum requirements. If there are any issues or errors, we're presented with them here. We then enter our company information. When we choose an SBS domain, by default, it ends up with a .local extension. These are only meant for internal use. It's recommended that you don't use any normal internet domain names, not like .com or .com.au. If you're using older Macintosh machines, you may need to change from the .local to .loc or .lan to avoid conflicts with the Macintosh protocol. It's recommended that you avoid using special characters like dollar, hash, and so on when creating a domain name. Here's where we input the domain name, the NetBIOS name, and also the server name. Again, a recommendation is to keep it as simple as possible. Because we chose something that's not .local, we're prompted with a message. Normally we just continue through this. If we have multiple network cards in our server, we need to choose which one will be used for our internal network. By default, the Small Business Server uses 192.168.16.2 as its IP address. However, you can change it to any valid IP address that you want. The recommendation is always to use a private IP address range. And this IP address range is what the internal clients or workstations will use to connect to the small business server. And this is where we can specify it. We specify the administrator password so that when the machine reboots, it can automatically log on and continue the installation process. Once we select it next, the first part of the installation will commence by setting the network configuration, IP address, domain name and server name that we've just selected, and then reboot. After the reboot is completed, the machine will automatically log back in and the installation will continue. We are now prompted to install the small business server applications. We can choose to locate these applications on any free partition that we currently have. It's always a good recommendation to keep Windows and program files separate from data files. 
once we've selected the location of our applications, we need to select the location of our data folders. Things like the intranet being SharePoint, client deployment, and our exchange databases. Simply select the line and make any changes that are appropriate. Once we've finished with this, the installations will commence. Once we've completed the installation, we'll be prompted with a message and told to reboot our system. For more information on this, please see our SBS 2003 Installation Part 2 video. If you have Small Business Server Premium, you will need to install additional components like SQL and ISA after the standard installation has completed. Install SQL 2005 first, then ISA 2004. The Exchange and SharePoint patches that are required as part of R2. And then finally the R2 technologies, which include things like Windows Server Update Services. By install, inserting the premium disk, we're prompted to install SQL Server and ISA. For more information about installing these applications, see our SBS 2003 Installation Part 3 video. Once we've finished those premium applications, we need to install Service Pack 2 for Exchange, Service Pack 2 for SharePoint, and Windows Small Business Server R2. For more information about installing these applications, please see our SBS 2003 Installation Part 4 video. Once the installation is totally complete, we need to reboot our system. We then need to install any critical updates via Windows Update. And once we've rebooted again, we now have a functional small business server. We need to follow the to-do list which is brought up upon the final reboot. The first thing we need to do obviously is to connect to the internet, add, multi add our users, add our computers and any additional applications. So as we can see here, the to-do list is part of the server management console as recommended that we follow through these procedures in the order that they are presented. For more information about this, please see our SBS 2003 installation part 5 video which focuses on using the connect to the internet wizard. We need now to install our workstations into our network. First thing you need to do is physically connect them to the network. Open a web browser on the workstation and type in the server name slash connect computer into your browser. This will then launch a wizard to allow us to complete the installation of our workstation. For more information, see our video adding workstations to small business server. Thank you very much for watching this presentation from Satin Alliance.